He must have. They were tied, so you would be panicking to get them off. I was scared. <sighs> then I remember basically tripping over this wooden bench here, tripped over, I actually scunned my knee a little bit, but it's like I had to keep running because I knew I knew they were coming after me. They knew they were looking for me. So I was literally running around the house. So I came over here. So I ran around the house. Quick as possible. up here and I was like this and basically I was trying to call Fox I remember like having my phone out and trying to call him I got through to him I told him like I'm here I need to I need someone here immediately and stuff mm-hmm do you remember what happened before you got here? I know... I was stuffed into a... into a car at... near the bean machine. I was stuffed near there. I was, walk, I was about to walk into the bean machine and get food. And then I got basically held up at gunpoint. Sure. Stuffed into a in the thing and uh, do you remember what happened while you were getting food before they got you <sighs> I remember I'm trying to remember I know we were in the car for a while because it was I was having a panic attack in the car, in the boot like literally a panic attack mm -hmm. like I barely have them anymore like I used to have them when I was younger but I was just full on having a panic attack because I didn't know what was going to happen did you make a phone call before or during <sighs> Not during, no. Like, I was tied up. I couldn't even reach my phone. Okay. So... Okay. <sighs> Who's you buying for? I remember... For? I was buying food for everyone, like, I was buying food for you guys, like, I needed food myself, and... Do you remember ringing me? I do. I remember ringing you and asking if you wanted food. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what kind of food it was, but... I don't know if if I remember you wanted food or not, but yeah. Do you remember what happened during that call? <sighs> so you asked me for food on the phone. Did anything else happen during that call? I was, I must have been held up during that call. Mm -hmm. I must have tried to, you know, hide, but 
they kind of caught me. And they told me that if I didn't hang up the phone, yeah, I something bad would happen. Yeah, the phone did cut off. <sighs> this much I will tell you, because this you wouldn't know anyway. When the call cut off, we were trying to work out whether you were getting kidnapped for a robbery. And your location was very vague. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? You don't need to be sorry. <laughs> Bree was standing next to me at the time. Because I told Claudia and Bree about it. And they thought exactly the same thing as I did. Which I've been kicking myself for, you know? I'm sorry. You really don't need to be sorry. I should have done better. You, no, well, no, no, no. I should have done better. Listen, you can't, you can't do better, right? Think about it, think about it logically now. You've got a, probably a, somebody holding something to you, or a knife or something, who knows. And they're telling you to hang up the phone. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I know, but I could have said something. I could have... <laughs> but here's the thing. You could have said something, but this conversation might not happen. You might have been dead. Do you see where, I, where I'm coming from right now? Yeah. So that probably saved part of your life at that point. You've got mm. to stop, you know, thinking it's... You're sorry and it's your fault. It's not your fault. You have to save yourself at some point. And if you had said something, you probably... We, we literally wouldn't be having this conversation right now. I don't want to think about what would happen... Exactly. ...if I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so what else do you remember from here? I made the phone call to Fox because I got my phone. Mm -hmm. But then it c the f they found me. They grabbed me. <sighs> they grabbed me and basically pulled me over here. I don't know what they were doing, but... It's definitely more than one then. It was two people, yeah. So it was one more one in charge than the other? Yeah. Can you one was just staring, standing back, and they were blacked out. Mm. Like, I didn't know if they were male or female. So you couldn't recognize a voice? I couldn't recognise the voice at all. So, alright. They were mostly silent. Right, okay. Okay. Yeah. It was, you, so you couldn't see any hair or anything like that? Nope. No? So they were mm -hmm. completely masked nope. and... Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Anything about the way they walked? Did any of them, like, be, you know, were injured or anything? I can't remember. That's fine. You take your time. I, I'm here with you to walk you through it without actually giving you the information you require. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. I'm, I'm trying just gonna, to remember. I'm just going to ask you the questions that Fox would be asking right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to remember. So what happened after they got you and uh, you were brought here? They dragged, they dragged me over here. Like... I remember trying to kick and scream, but they were covering my mouth. Mm -hmm. They were basically covering it. They were bringing me over here. <clears throat> basically, one held me. Mm -hmm. And...
basically, like they grabbed, they grabbed a metal bat out of the car. Mm-hmm. Take your time. <sighs> I'm here. Oh my god. Come on, Amina, take your time. You're not on your own. I'm here now, right? I know, I know, you just. I know it's hard. That's one reason I told you not to come here on your own. It's one reason I don't come here. And I said I'd bring you. For a reason. I thought it was strong enough. Don't worry about it. As soon as Leo said you were out in the car, I knew exactly where you were going before you even texted me. And I literally was running to get my car. I'm sorry. Just... It's just been playing with my head since I woke up. Like, since I, I got cleared, I just needed to find out what will happen to me. I know. I get it. But I, but on my, you know, on your brother's side of things, this is where it happened, and they are still about. So I am going to do everything in my power to get you here as fast as possible to make sure you are safe this time. I know, I know. At least at this time, I got my head on a swivel, and you can try and remember your steps instead of having someone yeah. sneak up behind you or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because this place is not know, exactly just... known for uh, its nice views, you know what I mean? <sighs> yeah, I've heard stories. Mm -hmm. Especially with that lighthouse. And who wants it. Yeah. Gotta ask you a question. Mm hmm. Why do you think they took you? I wish I knew that. Because I don't know. Because I. <laughs> you know I know your past, right? I. I know you know my past, and my past is. <sighs> As you haven't it's upset riddled. anybody in the sense of, you I know, haven't. with no, the, uh, the stuff you do. No, that was... That was a while ago. Mm. My my debt was already paid then. Right, okay, okay, okay. I don't need to just, just and I don't, and I don't, it. And I don't want to even... And I don't want to even tell you, I want to tell you what happened with that debt because you'll probably think, oh my god, what the hell happened? Listen, Amelia. You become my sister now, right? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to be here regardless. It doesn't matter when, how, why, or what. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know I have my own past when it comes to this place. Yeah wasn't always this person. Always cared, but I always wasn't this person. Yeah, yeah. I was kind Just... of what we call on a knife edge all the time. <laughs> I'm always on a knife edge now, like literally. But your knife edge is different. Your knife edge is a decision of which side of the knife you're going to be on. Are you going to be on the dull side or the sharp side? Hmm. Are you going to continue down the other path that you've been doing for so long? Which is the sharp side, which always somehow has consequences at some point. 
Or are you going to go for the dull side where it means your life will change? And you will make a difference? I really hope I do make a difference because I just feel like I'm... I don't know, I just feel like I'm... in a state of limbo right now. I just don't know what's happening and since I got out of the coma I've just been hazy and... <sighs> yeah. So from here... the bat... To remember next. Yeah. And this is where I know it's going to get hard for you. A lot more harder. <sighs> but I'm going to walk it with you, okay? Yeah. Even if you are a stubborn pain in my ass. <sighs> You're a stubborn pain in my ass too, don't worry. Yeah, that's why we love each other. It's a great. <laughs> See, I can I still make a smile bat. on your face, I tell you. <laughs> so what? I remember the metal bat. Mm -hmm. <sighs> they smacked me in the knee cap right there and then no word no nothing they just smacked me in the knee cap mm -hmm. I was in pain <laughs> I was screaming still remain silent at this point. They didn't say a word. Mm, okay. They... They smacked me in the kneecap and then... I felt the bat, the top end of the bat, smack me in the head, in the back of the head. And then... Blow after blow. And I felt my body just hurting and I was in pain. Was blow after conscious? blow. I was still conscious, yeah. I was half in, half out. But I could feel something pummeling me. And it wasn't pretty. I could feel every blow to my body. What happened after that? I was curled up. I remember curling up into the fetal position and I don't know, they must have stopped for a breather or something like that and I was I was in pain. I was <sighs> and What happened was they grabbed me by the hair. They wretched me over here. They were dragging me. Because I remember the drag marks along here. Basically, just I couldn't do a thing. I was... I was out of it. Mm -hmm. I was just... I don't know, my body was just feeling like it could... <sighs> and then I got here. They must have smacked me a couple of more times because I felt that, that metal object just slamming against me. Mm -hmm. They brought me up. 
by the hair. They just grabbed at my hair. And then I felt... I felt nothing. And then... Uh, I remember standing here. Just... I was half beaten. I was bruised. I, I didn't know where I was. All I remember was part, like standing here and seeing the the, the house there and mm -hmm. hearing the waves below me against the rocks. I remember hearing them and that smell of the sea breeze. <sighs> then all of a sudden I felt the ground just nowhere to be found like in a split second I was <sighs> I grabbed onto these bushes here I remember sort of just grabbing onto anything that could help me up mm -hmm. <sighs> it's like a few <sighs> It felt like a long time I was grabbing onto that bush there and I <sighs> All of a sudden I've at a bang. Mm hmm And then I let go of the bushes. I don't know why I did, but I let go and dropped into the water. I felt like I was going to drown. What else do you remember? I saw red in the water. That would be what happened to you coming off your body then. I think I was telling myself it wasn't coming from me. Mm -hmm. I must have had a burst of adrenaline because I woke up, I guess... I hit the water and then I woke, I saw I was in the water. I was trying to swim. Mm -hmm. But so that they didn't see me swim, they see me go deep. I went deep and try to follow around the rocks. What else do you remember? <sighs> it gets harder from this point. I was getting smacked against the rocks from the waves. I was trying to swim away, I was trying to hold my breath as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I... I remember coming up to the surface, I was... I felt broken. But in my last strength, I, I must have climbed the rocks near the lighthouse. Just so that I can get my head above water. Mm -hmm. Because in the back of my head, I was determined not to drown. 
do remember after that. It's hazy. I'm starting to felt like I needed to go to sleep. So I yeah, got up on the rock when I saw my opportunity after a not seeing them. I climbed off the rocks with all my strength that I had. Mm -hmm. And then I Take your time, take your time. I got you. <sighs> I got you. I remember seeing the lighthouse in the last picture on my head. And I thought it was, I was gonna go. <laughs> Anything else Ugh. happen over there? When you pulled yourself out? I can't remember anymore. Right. Can't remember I or just... it's still a bit hazy and you think something was there but you can't put your finger on it. I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Okay. I blacked out. I rem kinda remember blacking out then. All I just saw before I let, I closed my eyes was the lighthouse. And that's all you remember for now. Yeah. I didn't. I was just in my head thinking this is the last moment you're going to see in your life. A light. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so you remember, the last thing you remember after that is being in a hospital. Waking up. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember anything else. It's fine. I will, I will fill in blanks as much as I can. Of stuff that you wouldn't know. That I can tell you. But I, all I will say is this, a lot more happened there than you think. I will say this. What happened? This is not the first time I've been here. And it's a reason I don't go over there. Mm. I will say this. One of those people rang me. Still have no idea who they are. No number. All I got told was to come here really quickly. And all you need to know is I was here before the helicopter and the police were here. He came pretty fast then. You have no idea. <sighs> I literally slid into you and 180 degree my car into that camper van but there. <laughs> and, I, 
and I couldn't find you. Until I went there. You were half in, I'm sorry. Or half out of water at the time. <sighs> and then my training kicked in. I dragged you up. I then lifted you into my arms and put you by the lighthouse. Where I started to treat you while I waited. How was I? You were not good. You know? You you weren't you weren't um conscious at all. <laughs> you had a little bit of water in your lungs and so I rolled you over to get that out. You were still breathing at that point. You were very wet because you were half in, half out on those rocks on the water. Mm. So I wanted to get you out of there as fast as possible. And then Leo landed the helicopter over there and uh, brought his boat over. Uh, Fox was standing right behind me. But you could probably guess what he was thinking when he saw me. Because I was literally it's not, there. It's not your fault. No, no. He didn't know. <sighs> he didn't know. He didn't know that I was actually called there. Yeah. You had Raven land his helicopter on the rock over there. <sighs> then me and Leo, I had I had you in my arms while Leo got the boat. Carried you into the boat. We got you. I was still carrying you all the way up until we got to where my car was. Not now, but right behind the camper van. Yeah. And uh, that's where things got a bit more serious. Oh, so Your heart stopped. Leo had to perform CPR on you. That's why your ribs are hurting so much. And then we had to shock you back to life. And that's the most scariest moment of my life. Oh my god. Then uh, I left my car here. I carried you into the chopper. And I went into the back with you. And I hooked you up to all the machines. And I was monitoring while Leo flew us, flew us back. To the hospital. I don't know what to say. I also then came back after that. Claudia brought me up here. Because obviously one car was a quick fix and the other one was you. Yeah. And Fox wanted to talk to me. So I filled mm. him in on everything I saw when I was you. I even found something that was kind of buried. Right by Claudia's wheel of her car. I won't tell you what it was, but... That's up to Fox to tell you. You know? Yeah. All I know is your life is in danger for some reason I am unaware of. And it's the one part of the puzzle that's bothering me the most. <laughs> you and me both, I don't know what's happening. And when you were in a coma, <laughs> when they put you into a coma and they put all the tubes in you, I spent most of my days in that room. Even when I was on duty I'd visit in between the calls. 
I used to make sure all the doors were locked so nobody could get to your room. At one point, I was carrying a gun and I slept in the room. I held your hand. I got you that teddy bear. So you'd have something <laughs> when you woke up when I wasn't there. And then went and then I heard the panic alarm go off for that room. I was the first person in the room holding your hand. Trying to calm you down. Because you had tubes <laughs> in you and you were starting to panic. And you probably remember the rest after that. Yeah. Because obviously Charlie was there. Yeah. I remember. I think about it all the time. If I was maybe a couple of minutes later, would you still have been alive? Because you were in pretty bad shape. Especially uh, when you flatlined there. Yeah. I was treating you while having tears rolling down my eyes at that point. I'm sorry. You really gotta stop saying you're sorry. No, I can't help it. Do you know why? Because there was nothing in your power you could have done about it. You know what I mean? It's not like you tied yourself up, you know, put yourself in a trunk and, you know, drove the car from the trunk all the way here, beat yourself up. I know, you know? I know. See where I'm coming from? I just... <laughs> I'm just thankful that you're still here. That means more to me than you realise. I care a great deal about you. And that's how it is. But that, that day scares the crap out of me. I was on that island Don't last worry. night. You know, the shack. And I yeah. literally couldn't go anywhere near this. They, they wanted to go and see it. And I was like, I, I can put the boat there. Because we brought the boat. I brought my boat out. I said, you mm. can go there. But I will not step one foot anywhere near it. I get nightmares from that. And, and I, you still are getting them. I know you are. Because you had them when you were lying in bed, sleeping. That's why mm. I stayed with you and slept there. <sighs> That's just about the amount of information I can give you without you remembering. Yeah. But with all PD and EMS's powers, I literally did get you before them in that vehicle. <laughs> I literally bulldozed every car you can imagine out the way. Yeah. I'm still here though. And that I am very thankful for. The only part that's bothering me is why and why are they still after you. Mm. That's why you were always locked away. It wasn't because, you know, just to lock the door, it was to lock the door because we didn't want anyone to get to you. And when people left, the doors open. Trust me, you have no idea how angry I got. <laughs> Very angry. Oh, I was pissed. And the excuses I got it were been. really pissing me off even more. Oh, but you know, you know yeah, I said, uh, somebody just carried an ICU patient right out to the hospital. Right now. I, I literally just walked right the way out because you went on a call and left the doors open. Yeah. And I said, do you realise how dangerous it is if somebody gets through those doors to her room? All the other patients that are in there that are trying to be safe from harm. Yeah, just... <sighs> it, 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 it's still... I slept with that gun in your room for a purpose. 
Just about that way. <laughs> if anyone that shouldn't have been there walked through that door, they'd probably been shot. Shit. <laughs> That's how worried I was. About the who... Who these people fucking are. And it's the one piece of the puzzle that I, I can't do. Even the phone call. There's nothing in there to trace it. There's no information, no voices, no call stuff. Nothing. Just anonymous call. Disc, you know, a voice change. Yeah. I couldn't tell male, female. It's hard. It's just, they sit, it just... Fox it has felt clues. like they wanted a toy with me. Yeah. Fox has clues about things, which I am fully aware of. Mm hmm But I can't tell you. No, it's fine. Like, just in case you remember something that is, you thought was irrelevant. Yeah. You know? And that's, yeah, and that's I, unfortunate. I get it, I get it. I'd love to tell you everything, you know what I mean? I know, then and I, I know appreciate. your mind would be at rest, you know? Well, my mind's at ease now that I know parts of what happened, mm -hmm. I guess. <sighs> I'm sorry for worrying you. It's not your fault. Didn't think that. <laughs> I didn't. wasn't expecting that phone call, though. Yeah. It certainly, it certainly was niggling at me when you got taken and I couldn't put my finger on it. It's like a gut feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. But I had no info to find you. It was literally, you know, there's somebody with a gun and then the call died. And I was like, shit. Mm. Is it for a robbery? My gut was still tuning my stomach at that point. Um, you did what you could. I'm just thankful I got you in time. And you s and you saved my life. I do it over and over and over. I ain't losing <laughs> you. That's it. You mean way too much to me. <laughs> Just as much as Sydney means to me. You both are very close to me. With tough cookies, we can get through this, but yeah. Same thing happened when Sydney fell off the fucking dam into the drop of a lifetime ravine, as I call it. Mm. <laughs> Pax saw the 911. I didn't at that time. I was on duty, but I didn't see it. And she said, "You want? You might want to go to that one." I said, "I said go to what?" I said, "Look at the 911." Saw her name. Pax gave me the keys to her Rambo while she went to put her bike away. I literally was flying that ambulance as fast as that thing can go because <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. Is she all broken? She dead. It's, it's not exactly a small fall. It's not like you fall into water, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, I know. It's, it's the same feeling I had no about you. There's no water at all. <laughs> no, it's the same feeling I had about you when I was here. And that gut feeling got worse the closer I got you. Hardest thing I had to do was drag you out of that water. And I literally lifted you into my arms. Not exactly light, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, I know. I know. I gotta do more squats. <laughs> gotta tone those legs. But yeah, no. I carried you and laid you in front of the door of the lighthouse. The hardest thing to do is to treat somebody very close to you. Without panicking. Bree has told me that in the past. She's told me that she's had to <sighs> treat her ex husband before she, he died. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. probably why I can't be EMS because. How do I explain <sighs> this? I can do all that work on a dime. Except when it becomes personal. It's harder than everyone thinks it is. Yeah. My brain went into full on save your life mode. And that's all I cared about at that point. Didn't care who was behind me, around me. They came near me, I would have probably shot them. <laughs> I was too busy saving your life. I do appreciate that, I really do. I'd do anything for you, Amelia. You mm -hmm. know that. Oh, I know that now. <laughs> Definitely know that. I think that's why I keep telling you all the time. Stop thinking you're one man band. Or you're on your own, because you're not. <sighs> I'll always keep appearing it's... and annoying the <laughs> shit out of you. Yeah, I know that. Hence, like, case I, I know point. that. Hence, case in point, there's my car. Yeah, I know. Because I cracked myself. <laughs> I literally, as soon as you give me that text, and I knew exactly where you were, Leo, Leo Tally, and Flippin' Saint saw me run out the hospital so fast, they did So I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> but Leo's probably gonna, you know, get a fucking shit rag off me later. Because he knows full well you shouldn't be up here. <laughs> he and I know both well how much your life is in danger right now. And the fact he let it happen pissed me off. I'm sorry, I... Yeah, but... Look, I just... I get it. You know what I'm like. You know what I'm like. Yeah, I'm stubborn. stubborn yeah, I, need yeah, yeah, yeah. To, I need to get this done. I, like, got, I got two big stubborn people in my life. Oh, you and Sydney. Believe me, Bree. Bree texts me. Mm. She's like... She's like, if you go, please don't go by yourself. I don't want you getting hurt.